Anthony, so what is food, what is poison? Oh, that's very simple. Something that, that causes a burden to your body is a poison, period. Something that, that you cannot live without, that will nourish you, that will give you not just a little energy, but you know, you'll, you'll notice that you'll have sustained uh, vitality. That's food, that's nourishing. So for me, it's simple. Orange is nourishing, um, a chocolate bar is not. not. So it's to, once to raise your higher consciousness and your health and everything, the vibration, whatever word you want to use, but raise you, that's your intuition, that's, your, that's the higher way of living. And that, that brings you down, maybe drugs, medicine, supplements, chocolate, um, luxury foods, cooked foods, all of them bring you down. They're comfort foods. They, they're comfort foods because they make you feel comfortable all the time, but they're poison. So what I do is I make it very simple. I have a saying in my mind before I put something in my mouth. People say prayers. I basically say, if I don't need it, I won't eat it. It's very simple. You know, if I, can, if I look at a chocolate bar, if I don't need it, I won't eat it. Put it down. Mm -hmm. it takes more out of my body to enjoy that chocolate bar, and it's going to destroy my 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 senses of taste, my sense of smell. Destroy, you know, my body when I eat it. It's going to cause harm, distract me. And when I say destroy, I mean it's going to distract me. By distracting me of something, it also destroys me. You know, destroys me little by little. That's mm -hmm. that's how I see it. So know? what is poison? Um, poison would be anything that that isn't meant for the body. I mean, isn't something that I would consume normally. And if I have to cook it and prepare it rice, wheat, corn, soy, potatoes, those are all things I have to put a lot of effort into eat it. So it's poison. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to manipulate myself to eat it. An orange, peel it, eat it. Apple, peel it and eat it. Um, banana, same thing. I'll just start eating it right there. Watermelon, I'll break it open and eat it. Those things are food. Those are nourishing. Mm -hmm. Poison and food. You'll see this. So you basically have a distinction. Mm -hmm. Can you live without it, right? Yeah, some, some fruits and foods you can live without, of course. But you'll see that the, when you consume it, it'll also eliminate out of your body pretty fast and no burden, you feel really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Do, do fruit, you mentioned that fruit is cleansing, that fruit cleanses us. Does our body actually absorb the fruit? Now that's a good question. I mean, I, after I'll tell you right now, I eat a um, steady mono meal of watermelon, let's say. Within 30 minutes, I'll eliminate a great deal of what I eat, same with oranges and apples. So. That's the great question. How much do I actually use of that substance? And that's, no one really can actually answer that without putting themselves in liability. But what I can tell you is that there's times that I've ran 30 miles without any food or water. I've done that before. Um, same thing with fasting. Some people fast a great period of time. I've only done um, a water fast for 55 days. I've done a, a clean dry fast for about 10 days. There's different ones, and, and fasting is, is misunderstood. You can't just stop eating certain foods, let's say. If you're normally eating meats, chicken, bacon, whatever, dairy, you have to taper yourself off because you're going to have to withdraw symptoms. Your body's going to start releasing a lot of toxins that are in your cells and tissues and organs all at once. Your body may not be able to handle that. So when it comes to, when it comes to that, you have to, you have to be mindful and measure yourself out how you're eliminating stuff and fruits. As far as what I retain, what I don't, I'm, I monitor what comes out of my body. If I don't, if I lots of stuff come out of me, that means I eat less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fruit is like a brush. Yeah, it's like a beautiful broom. It cleans your intestines out really well, and, and I feel really good. Less less worry about cleanses and detoxes and flushes and all this magic stuff that <laughs> just is more of a pain in the ass to do than just yeah. eat fruits. <laughs> so your recipe is basically let's have fun. Yeah. Let's live in let's live in paradise. Yeah. Back to Eden, and symbiotic with trees. Yeah, you, you eat if you have a clean intestine, clean colon, clean everything, mouth all the way to anus. You know you'll see whatever you ate come out of you and smell just as good, just as sweet. That comes out of me smells like sweet fruits, the same thing. And so if I eat something with seeds, if I were to travel a little bit of a distance and I'd have to you know go to the bathroom in a soil. Then I'm giving that seed a chance to, you know, become a plant and become a tree. So it's almost like it's not almost. It's it's obvious. It's symbiotic relationship between ourselves and the plants. Right. You can't do that with hot dogs and hamburgers. You can't poop and, you know, it's and toxic. grow a hamburger tree. No, no. <laughs> but it's, think about it. It's a toxic, nasty ammonia kind of smell. Right. And you know, sulfur dioxide dyes your hair white. Your hair falls out when you eat meat. Why do you want to go through that? It's a horrible feeling, you know. So when you eat fruits, you'll notice. You'll have more hair, stronger hair, stronger nails, greater skin, just eating fruits. Yeah, I already had stronger nails just hanging, hanging out with you <laughs> and eating fruit. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so fun. It's awesome. Fun. So, so fruit is like a cleansing brush. Absolutely. Yummy cleansing brush. Yeah, and definitely trees give us oxygen. We give them carbon dioxide. Yeah. Right. So there's a that, and they need us. They they seduce us by the fragrance and by the colors yeah. of the fruit, and we we transport their their seeds. Yeah. In nature, we'll transport their seeds further away yeah. from from them absolutely we give them amazing. another home yeah it's a beautiful amazing. beautiful paradise exchange amazing so you said to, you said once that we can live in a culture of seed or culture of drug yeah i mean i see it every here on fourth of july we are more, right today people are obsessed we're all obsessed with poisoning ourselves i go running and i had to stop myself because wherever i ran if i ran past um stores and things like that that sold meat products and all that all i smell is like the rotting flesh being burnt and yeah. then if you were to go to a fruit bar which i saw fruit bars all over la jolla juice bars it doesn't matter if you're here's a juice bar and you're right next to these meat making places you're you're going to be overwhelmed by the smell of rotting flesh cooked where you know we are obsessed with killing ourselves obsessed with suffering ourselves it's just a fact. I mean, you don't need to, to burn flesh anymore. And just so what is pain? Pain? Pain is, I think they're... You I mean, said it's pressure once, right? Oh, it's just pressure. It's a buildup of pressure. And, and once you release pressure, you feel bliss. You feel happiness. That's why there's, you know, many different methods in yoga, martial arts, you know, lifting weights, exercising, running. You build up all this pressure, then you release it. And it's the most amazing... Sex. You build up pressure, you release it. Same thing. And... So pain oftentimes is this buildup of pressure, just what it is. And when you release that pressure, mm -hmm. you feel so much better. So if someone is in chronic pain, what would you what would you suggest? Release the pressure out. I mean, some people do. A, huh. Some people would do a saltwater flush. Some people would do an enema. That helps a lot to relieve pressure because they're constipated. Oftentimes, the pressure is caused by constipation. And sometimes, if they're clean enough, that's the that's the problem right now. Some people aren't very clean, so they can't go on a whole fruit diet because they're very blocked up. So they have to transition to a whole fruit diet, meaning they have to eat cooked foods until they get to the to the place of raw, let's say, an end fruit. And so what I would suggest is, is add a lot of fruit to your foods, but be mindful of when you have them because you will blame the, the pain, the pressure, the gas, the bloating on the banana, on the apple, which in America, when we eat desserts, it's always at the end of the meal. And if it is a sweet fruit, or even if you want to eat fruit after our meal, we're going to feel sharp pains because it's you're putting a lot of fruits that's going to ferment very fast on already acid forming foods. So the best thing you could do is eat fruits before you eat the foods that shouldn't really be eaten. But, uh, but that's the mistake we make. So we blame that, which is helping us. Yeah. That's just what I've learned. Interesting. So fruit is very jealous, right? It expands in the tummy. It yeah. starts cl cleaning up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So whatever you ate before, uh, the body is going to give you signals of pain. Yeah. And people basically blame fruit for that. Absolutely. They, the, the meats, the chickens, the fish, you know, to eat that stuff, you have to season it. You have to cook it. You have to manipulate it. You have to numb yourself. Yesterday you said, you said that there was a lady who ate some, so who drank carrot juice. Carrot juice. Yeah, yeah. Carrot and apple juice. I fed someone a carrot and apple juice to a whole group of people. Cause I, I fresh pressed organic, fresh pressed carrot juice and apple juice. And, um, and she was a nurse, and I remember her calling me sometime later in that evening, asking me if there was something wrong with the carrots and apple because she was in the hospital. She felt some sort of a movement, and it, it stirred her up. And I said, no, out of the 14 people that drank carrot and apple juice, you're the only one who's telling me that you're having problems. And then I asked her, do you mind telling me what you had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And she told me, oh, I had bacon, eggs, sausage, ham. Basically, she's been eating this, this nasty diet of rotting flesh all her life like I have I mean I had one time so the fact that she's putting something in her body that detoxifies or that gives her body when I say detoxify all it really means is giving your body a rest from poisoning it for a moment so that your body starts releasing these toxins from the cells the tissues the organs and so forth so when she finally did that her body reacted very quickly and swiftly to try to remove all the poison that's that's trying to kill her really and her reaction freaked her out because she felt a little lightheaded a little flush sometimes and um, you know things like that her temperature went up a bit and she was fine she was fine with that but she's so used to being numb that you know, it startled her it's very interesting the reaction right that people will blame carrot juice carrot and apple juice yeah <laughs> not the bacon and eggs yeah not the rotting flesh that's just disgusting but yeah, yeah interesting okay so let's talk about fat and parasites what are parasites well parasites are organisms that live off the host 
um, with no benefit to the host. That's generally the, the definitions that I've seen in different um, forms. But as far as like what we think of the human body parasites, we're looking at fungus, bacteria, nematodes, protozoites, you know, organisms that are oftentimes microscopic or maybe a little larger inside our body causing um, a burden to our body. And as far as fats go, you know, fats have been the, you know, the elephant in the room. People don't talk about it. They talk about sugars. They think the sugars are causing the candida, the diabetes, the parasites are feeding off the, uh, off the sugar. When in reality, you know, the oil, the fats are preventing the, the body. It's basically becoming insulin resistant as well as uh, not allowing the body's cells to absorb and use the nutrients that are, should be available to it. And as far as the parasites go, you know, a lot of the, the meat-eating parasites, um, flesh-eating parasites, or even the parasites that oftentimes can, can invade the human brain and manipulate our, our cravings and manipulate our emotions, you know, a lot of them were introduced to our body by eating flesh, you know, by through another animal. That's possible as well. And so oftentimes I hear people tell me they can't have sugar in fruits because, um, because their doctor tells them not to have sugar because the candida is going to get worse. And I hear that all the time. Candida is a big one. From what I've understood, the average person in the world has candida albicans, has the yeast already inside them. They just don't have an overgrowth or an imbalance because they've been consuming a lot of meats and fats and junk. And if you ask anybody who has the, these diseases, these parasites, let's say, ask them, have you had a, a long, lifelong lifestyle of eating nothing but fruits and sweet veggies or whatever? You know, 10 out of 10 would say no. So how can one say that the disease they got was caused by the sugar and fruits if they weren't even sure even if they weren't even eating sugar and fruits you know to get it they got it from you know preventing their body from eliminating waste that's pretty much the simpleness of it if you prevent your body from eliminating waste you're going to have things in there trying to eliminate waste for you eating the the residue the residual stuff inside your gut um, so what do the parasites eat they eat animal flesh. products flesh yeah, right. they can eat. Depends on the parasite. And they course. eat fat, yeah? You oh, mentioned. yeah, fats. They can, they can sustain on different food sources. So they don't need oxygen. They function in anabolic, anaerobic. Yeah. anabolic environment, right? I think, yeah, I think it's called anaerobic. Yeah, um, yeah anaerobic. So they produce their own oxygen, uh, their own way to live. And they live in a very an acidic environment. So when you alkaline your body, you make that environment like Antoine Bechamp had talked about. Antoine Bechamp was a researcher scientist at the same time as Louis Pasteur in that period of time. And his... Uh, contradiction to Louis Pasteur, he challenged them, was the cellular theory versus the germ theory. And at the end, from what I understand, Louis Pasteur agreed that the, the cellular theory, meaning that the environment, if you have a host environment um, available to the organism, it's going to thrive. And if your environment is not something that the organism can live in, it's going to die. Very simple. And so the candida, candida, you know, that's not occurring in natural, long-term, lifelong, high carb raw vegans. That occurs in people that eat meat. You know, same thing with a lot of parasites. In Hawaii, we have the rat lung parasite, rat lung worm parasite. Um, here in California, you have Lyme disease. Oftentimes, the people that exhibit the worst, um, the worst symptoms and effects are meat eaters. You know, they're not high carb raw vegans and they don't have a clean digestive tract. And so when you, when you have a blockage, you're gonna allow whatever organism to proliferate, to mate, to breed, to you know, create an imbalance. So you want a flowing river. That's that's what I've learned. The parasites go mm -hmm. flushing your body. So basically, when we eat fat, yeah. we we con parasites kind of. You said that parasites make us consume fats that normally we wouldn't eat. Well, the, well, eat foods that we don't normally. Eat. That's probably right. the best way to say it. fats included as well. I mean, mm -hmm. if you think about what a fat does when you eat fat foods, avocados, coconut meats, um, or if you're a meat eater, um, butter and so forth. They're comfort foods, and, and fat itself is an insulator. Fat is a great insulator. It, um, you can't tell if how toxic you are. Um, it's also an emotional insulator, you can say, too. You eat a lot of fats. When, when bad things were happening to me, I was eating Ben & Jerry's ice cream at one point you know, in my life, and it soothed me, it sedated me. So with these parasites and other organisms thriving in this environment, acidic environment, um, it just only made sense that the more, the greater the fat, the greater the organisms, because the fat also creates a blockage. When you have a blockage, you're creating a beautiful home for these these parasites. So, is it true that parasites can can manipulate the brain of the host? Absolutely. Um, the CDC recognizes one as an example out of many. It's called the Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii is known for manipulating the uh, the host. 
In this case, it was a cat. The cats are, that's why pregnant women should always wear gloves when they handle, and also a mask when they handle cow, um, the kitty litter. But anyway, make a long story short, the Toxoplasma gandhi was known for, uh, as, an, as a parasite to be inside the gut of the cat. The cat scratches a, a bird or a rat, let's say. The rat goes back to its den with the infection inside it, the parasite. And when the rat produces feces, the dust stirs up, the other rats start getting infected. And now the parasite finds its way into the brain of the, of the rat or the mouse. And the rat or the mouse no longer are triggered to run away from the smell of cat urine. Instead, they're attracted to cat urine. And it makes it easier for the cat to trap and kill. So it's a symbiotic relationship. The cat eats the mouse or the rat. And the, uh, the parasite breeds with the other parasites inside the gut of the cat. And it continues doing this as a cycle. Now, as far as humans go, when humans are infected, the female human will be more attractive to the non-infected human and things like that with the male as well. There's certain behavior traits that are observed, and this is something that CDC documented. I'm sure you can look it up on the CDC's website still. Um, so yeah, parasites also have a certain diet that they need to eat. So it only makes sense that they would actually stir someone up to have a craving for not just food that we think, but smoking cigarettes for having a really unhappy day, as an example. You want an acidic environment so all those things contribute to a greater environment for the for the parasite. Mm -hmm. What what happens to parasites when we cleanse? Um, when we cleanse, we stop feeding them, and when we stop feeding them, they leave your body. I mean, I've had so many worms come out of my body, and maybe other forms of life that I'm not even aware of, fungus, bacteria, all coming out of my bowels, and maybe other places as well. But um, they all release because I'm no longer feeding them. It kills them by releasing them. And, the idea that putting cloves and black walnut husk and wormwood and magic potions here and there and lotions to try to get rid of your parasites is very ridiculous because all you're doing is putting stuff onto your body that becomes more of a burden to your body. Your body can and will eliminate things it doesn't need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes when people cleanse, mm -hmm. they, they are afraid that they will die from cleansing. Is it part of the manipulation that the parasite could do? Absolutely. In the brain? Yeah, absolutely. But it also depends on the cleanse. I, I don't know what the cleanse is. Uh, right. It <laughs> Some cleanses could be killing people too. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's chelation therapy. That's a cleanse. I mean, there's chemotherapy. You can call that a cleanse. I mean, not a cleanse, but I mean, you can call it what you like. Um, so you got to be mindful of what kind of cleanse. If it's something that's very simple and you can live on it, as an example, I can live on fruits all my whole life. Good. <laughs> that's great. But when it's, when it's introducing substances that you can only take for you know, a period of time, a short period of time, as an example, CBD, um, cannabinoids, and all this other stuff, oils, the promise of these cures. Oftentimes, the people taking this stuff have to take it for the rest of their life. And if it was actually the cure or the therapy, you would take it for a predestinated amount of time and no longer need it anymore. And at the same time, you can also, if it were a quote-unquote cure, you should be able to live on it. I mean, indefinitely also. It shouldn't be something that's so poisonous or, or effective in your body that you shouldn't, you know, you can hurt yourself by taking it too long. And that's what too much, is. right? Too much, yeah. It's, that's craziness. That's mm -hmm. a poison. Mm -hmm. And uh, by poisoning your body, how are you going to get better? Mm -hmm.